Hi, this is episode 85 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Continuing on our series of solid development principles, in this guide, I'm gonna walk through the open-closed principle. For some reason or another, developers seem to struggle understanding this solid element more than many of the other ones. With that in mind, I'm gonna give a dead simple explanation of how the open-closed principle works, followed by a code example. I think that once you see how powerful this concept is, you'll fall in love with it and you'll wanna use it in your own programs. Because at its core, it allows you to scale your code without having to worry about wasting time on legacy classes. A dead simple explanation of the open close principle is this. Software elements, classes, modules, functions, etc. should be open for extension but closed for modification. Essentially this means that you should be able to build your classes in a way that you can extend them via child classes and inheritance and that once you've created the class it no longer needs to be changed. The original concept was credited to Bertrand Meyer when he coined the term back in 1988 in his book, Object-Oriented Software Construction. If you've never attempted this pattern before, the concept may seem like it's really easy. However, I think you'll find that this is a skill that has to be practiced with quite a bit of repetition, much like any other advanced development task. To understand how the open-close principle works, let's look at a practical example. I've created an order report class that contains some attributes, such as customer and total. In addition to the attributes, the class also contains a couple of methods. It has an invoice method that prints out the details associated with an order. It also has a bill of lading method that prints out the order report for shipping purposes. If we run this program, you'll see that it works perfectly fine and prints out the values for each method. However, this class has a nasty secret. It doesn't like change. Let's imagine they were asked to update the bill of lading method to also print out the customer address. This may not seem like a major change. However, in order to accommodate the request, we have to make four changes. One of the changes is even requiring us to pass an address to the class as a required argument. This means that even when all we need is an invoice that doesn't care about the customer address, we have to include the additional element. Also of note is that this was a very small change. Imagine what would happen if we needed to build a feature such as including a QR code. So not only is this code not very scalable, it's breaking the open-close principle. A well-written class should not have to be rewritten in order to integrate a new feature like having an address. Thankfully, we can clean up this entire class and follow the open-close principle by leveraging object-oriented inheritance. In this code, I've pulled out the invoice and bill of lading components into their own classes that inherit from the order report class. This refactor has a number of benefits. First, it follows the open-close principle because now, when we want to build new features for invoices or bill of ladings, we don't have to touch this open report class. Therefore, we can say that the parent class is closed. Additionally, we can split up the two components. Whenever we create an invoice, we don't have to pass in unnecessary address elements. This removes a code that is not needed and could lead to confusion later on down the road. Lastly, our program not only follows open-close principle, but now our classes also follow the single responsibility principle. Notice how each class has a specific focus AKA a single responsibility. If you run this code, you'll see that it still has the same behavior as before, but now our code is much more scalable and I dare say solid. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to understanding the open close principle and that you can apply it to your own programs. In the resource section in the show notes, I've included a number of links where you can explore this topic in more detail.